All right, so in this video, we're going to add a checkbox to our user form. Now, to add a checkbox, we could add it directly from Bootstrap. So if I go here under Components and Forms, at some point, we're going to find a checkbox. See it right here? So that would be an example of a checkbox. They probably have something else here. But I want to use something a little prettier. For that reason, I'm going to use this. So bootstrap switch button, this library. And again, I'm going to link to this below the video. Now here, if I scroll down, see if we have this nicer looking checkboxes we can use. Now to be able to use it, we need to make sure we add this library to our user form. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to my user form and here's what we need to add. We need to add this link to our style sheet. So I'm going to copy that, go back to this and I'm going to put that right here in our head section, just below the link for bootstrap CSS. And then the second thing, I'm going to go back to this and add the script, the second line, copy that go back and script should go in the bottom of the page. So again, right before our script right in here, I'm going to add this new script right below. Save this. So now we should have the library hopefully installed. So we should be able to use it. So let's go back and try to choose an example. So for example, if I want like this size, that should be what seems to be the third one, this one. Let's copy that, go back to our user form and add this. So this is that last button with it here. Now I want to add it right below. Now I'm going to just paste it here, but I'm not going to just leave it like this in the middle. I'll still put it inside of a form group like this and save this. Let's go and reload this and see what happens. So as you can see, I have a checkbox. So now it says on and off. So what I wanted to say, I wanted to say something like arrived on time or arrived late. And originally we'll probably just keep it like off position as arrived on time. So that will be the default. If you wanted to, you'll check this and it will go like arrived late. Let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to go back to this library, scroll down to find the options here. So it seems that by default, if it's not checked, so if I look at this code, see this says that it's checked. And if I remove that it's checked, it should just go to off. So let's reload this just like a regular checkbox. So if you want to use the regular checkbox, by the way, all the stuff that I'm going to cover, like how to get that uh, checkbox and to know if it's checked or not and send it to the back end, all of that is going to be the same. It's just this one looks prettier. This is what I'm going to use. Now I want to find out how to change the text. So this should not be off. It should be arrived on time. So see, it has this data on, data off. All right, I'm going to copy that and go back to this and add it right here. When it's on, it should be arrived late. And when it's off, it should be arrived on time. Okay, let's go check this out. Now, for whatever reason, it decided to make this this particular size. So I probably want this to still sit on a single line. So maybe we just have to make it bigger a little bit. Let's see how we can accomplish that. Data width, maybe. Let's try that. I'll just do 100 and see what happens. So save this. So maybe it should be like 150-ish. 
This is still too big. Let's just set the height too, I guess. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to try 25. All right. So that's good enough, I think. Arrived on time. Arrived late. And finally, I want to change this to red. That would be danger, I guess, for data on style. Save this again, reload, and hopefully we'll be done with the design part. Good. So now at this point, I want to make sure I send this here. We can always just send on time or not on time to our spreadsheet, or we could only send it when it's not on time. I don't know. So I'll just show you how to do it. And then you can figure out which one you want to use. Now we need to grab that checkbox, which is input type checkbox. So we're going to give this an ID. Now, once we give this an ID, we need to find that element by its ID when we're about to send information to our backend, which is happening all in here. Now, the way we're going to do that, we'll use document get element by ID again to find that element. Now, however, in this element, we're not going to use the value to figure out what's the value of the element because there's nothing typed in here. Even though there's this text that's visually in here, there's no value in the checkbox. So the only thing we can do, we can know whether this box was checked or not. So checked means when we click on this and it's on and it's unchecked when this is off. And we can find out what it is by so if we take that arrival time, which is going to be this element that we find on a page and do dot checked, if that's checked, this is going to be true. Otherwise, if it's not checked, this is going to be false. So we should be able to react on that. So I'm going to set a variable and I'm going to set this variable conditionally. So what that means is I'm going to make it equal to, I'm going to say, if this is true, question mark. So if it's checked, we want it to say on time in quotes because this text and then otherwise, which is what's going to be after the colon late, or you could also just do it like this to just leave it blank. I'm just going to say late, save this. Now that's going to be this variable, which we need to send to this again as a new column. So comma and paste. Now I don't need to do dot value on this because this is already the value. So I'm going to say arrival colon is this save it. Now the last piece is to grab that information on our back end, which I called arrival. Right here, this row data is going to have that new piece and we just have to do the same thing we've been doing the whole time. Let's go check this out. There it is. It says late. Now I'm going to do this again. Oh, that should not be late, should it? And what's going to happen now when I have this checked? It should be the exact opposite of what I did here. When it's checked, oh, of course, I didn't do this right. When it's checked, it should be, it should be late. When it's unchecked, it should be on time. Let's go back and reload this. Now there is one extra thing here. The last thing that's going to happen here, see, after I sent the form, this didn't go back to default unchecked. It's still checked. So I want to also make sure when we run this, it goes back to basically unchecked and that we do after we do this. But if you remember, we made this clear fields, which basically just loops through the fields and it does this, it makes the value blank, but this is not going to work because this is a checkbox now. So one thing we could do 
we could just do it separately, but I don't really want to do it separately. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that ID and pass it to the script, just like all the other ones. And then I'm going to go and fix this clear fields function to add handling so it can deal with checkboxes too. So we have to come here. So when we send this fields, this takes the fields and loops through them. And every time we get one of those elements, which is that element that's one of the fields. Now we automatically here just make the value blank. But what we can do, we can do a little if statement here. We can say if the type of the element L dot type, if that equals to checkbox, then we have to do something different. And otherwise, we'll do what we used to do before. Now, what we'll do in case it's a checkbox, we'll have to take that element and make it not checked. And we'll do it by saying L checked equals to false. So that's the way we'll clear that. I keep adding the same product, but it doesn't matter. So it says late, but that didn't clear this. Oh, I think I know what's going on here. Uh, what really happened is because this is not a regular checkbox. We're probably making it unchecked, but that doesn't actually change the visuals because we're using a library. So we need to figure out how we can change that. If you were using regular default checkbox, that should be it. But for this, we need to do it from the library side too. Which seems to be this. So if we copy this, go back to our code. So instead of doing this, we need to use their library, which is using jQuery. So we need to reselect that element using this. So we just have to figure out what's the ID of that element by looking at that element here. And we should be able to do it by using concatenation, if nothing else like this. And that hopefully will toggle that back. All right, let's go test this again. Arrived late. And that switched it back as you can see. So we're able to turn that off. And if it's just regular, this without checking the box, it should say on time and well, it shouldn't change anything because it's already turned off. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So that's our checkbox. Again, you could just use the default checkbox, then you wouldn't have to do this. But for me, I did have to do this. So here we are. And that should be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.